Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to EXP Family Tree Wednesday Productivity Mastermind. Every month, we are blessed to have Sharon Casey join us to talk about simplifying and optimizing operations, systems, all the things that are kind of the thorn in the side of us as realtors. I'm speaking for myself, but probably for many. <laughs> and that's why I love having Sharon as a partner because she's amazing at this side of the business and she really brings a tremendous amount of value. And so you can go back and um, just uh, scroll down an EXP Family Tree or search uh, Sharon's name because I always take her. She's done this now two months in a row. This is the third month. So if you want to catch up or hear some of the suggestions she had from the other weeks, you can do that. Um, and if you want the recording, you'll be able to find it on my YouTube channel within 24 hours. So uh, without further ado, Sharon, give yourself a little introduction like you always do because we have a few new people on the call and uh, tell us what you're going to talk about today. Perfect. I love it. Thank you guys so much for having me again. I'm learning my way through um, this opportunity to mastermind with you guys um, because I'm more of like a doer in my role. So my name is Sharon Casey. I am a licensed realtor in Minnesota. I've been in real estate for about seven years and I do no production. I have always been on the operations side. I started out as a transaction coordinator for the first three years for a large, uh, large team in Minnesota. I did about 300 sides a year. So I got to be fully immersed in end-to-end -end transaction management. And I was lucky enough that they trusted me to hand that file completely over to me. And I took it and ran with it all the way to the closing table. Um, for the last three years, I have been an independent contractor working with teams to help onboard and develop um, their operations staff while also looking at their systems and processes to determine if there's ways to become more efficient to lean into them, to simplify them, to remove the complexity of the business, because we all start out with these great ideas and we make these huge processes out of, you know, five to a hundred steps. And now we're sitting back going, I can't keep up with my own steps. So, so I really love that. My background is in administration, in um, human resources, training, learning and development, onboarding, a lot of corporate onboarding experience. Um, and then I did uh, a few years in a manufacturing setting where I was the training and quality manager, which is where I really got my love for lean and Kaizen and really simplification of steps. And so I've kind of got a brain now where I'm always thinking like, how can I do this the most efficient, even to the degree I go shopping, right? And we know the map to get to the various stores and I can take right turns and not have to work through stoplights and all that thing. So it's kind of become a little bit of a uh, obsession with me. So that's um, where I have been. Um, recently, I've been uh, working with some teams and helping them with their staffing and onboarding and working with an EXP family tree, some things there. So I'm really loving it. Um, and I get to talk to everybody once a month about things that I have found that have been helpful for me. So before I dive in, any questions or right off the top that anybody has that they'd like to chat about? Um, as Carrie said, we did speak uh, last month. We talked a little bit about um, leading others, uh, where we talked about how to help your team, your assistant, or your staff develop growth plans, communicate with them, uh, making sure that you're available to them to help lead them. Uh, a lot of times agents get so busy that we just kind of move on and forget about them and think they're okay until they're not okay, right? So we talked about that last month. And the month prior to that, we just talked about leading ourselves. And when we lead ourselves, how are we managing our time, our resources? Are we being a good uh, example to our team? Are we following through on our promises? Um, are we having our systems and our processes and our workday set up for success so we're the most efficient with our time? So as Carrie said, you can always go back and watch those. I will warn you that last month I had my cute little grandson distracting all of us. So I promised I wouldn't let that happen again. But um, today, here's my focus today. Today, I'm going to talk about two things. One is I really want to kind of dive into what a uh, planning event could look like for you and or your team or a collaboration of people. As we move into the fourth quarter now, we're starting to think already about next year, about what that planning could look like. And then I'm going to speak first about communication. And I always kind of pick a topic based on what I'm really diving into deep lately when I'm helping others. And so communication has always been a huge part of how I think I can work with people and they trust me and they open up to me and they're willing to be have difficult conversations because I always prepare them in advance that that conversation could occur. 
So we're going to dive into communication and then move on to kind of thinking about what that um, next 2024 planning meeting could look like. Sound good? Okay, any questions, hands, anything? I don't see anything yet. Okay, perfect. So um, communication. I am somebody who is a straight shooter. And so I don't, haven't always been that way. I was often a people pleaser. And, and so I would do anything and not really stand up for myself and oftentimes say yes instead of no when the, the right opportunity presented itself. So um, over time, and thanks to uh, reading the book, Fierce Conversations by Susan Scott, which is always highly recommended among our real estate peers, um, I found a way to, to have really good opening conversations with people as I meet them or as I bring them on to the teams or as I interview them that sets the expectation that we're going to have very good structured fierce conversations on occasion. Um, and what does that look like? So if you've ever been in a hiring role in the past, one of the things we love to do is always have an expectations conversation. So we've done the interviews, we've done the background checks, we've done the references, we've discussed the position and now we're ready to make an offer. Until we have this expectations conversation, we really should be just taking a step back and saying, you know, have I covered everything with these people? Do they know what to expect from me? The expectations conversation is really your opportunity to set the stage for future conversations. And some of the scripts that you will hear are on a scale of one to 10, how honest can I be with you? On a scale of one to 10, how do you want us to have conversations about performance? On a, and then help me understand like how you like to receive information about performance, process that information, and then come back together to discuss it. Uh, on a scale, you know, what are your triggers? Like, is there, how, how can I help make things like this easy for you? Because as you know, those, these first 90 days are really a trial time. And we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to speak to me and give me feedback as much as I want to give you feedback as well, good and bad, right? So having this kind of initial conversation, a lot of people I have talked to basically go, whoa, no one's ever asked me that before. I've never known how to do this before. And so what that has done for me is we, we sit down and we have this conversation and basically I just say, hey, I want you to know that direct conversations is going to get us to the next step faster. And so with respect and with you know care and empathy, I'm going to always come to you with what's happening. I'm going to be honest with you and also make sure that we can have a win-win at the end of this. Uh, been dealing with this a lot in the last half a year because what happens when you aren't having the opportunity to speak freely and have good constructive conversations without emotion, uh, the whole relationship starts to break down. Uh, I've worked with CEOs and mega agents and in the past, I'm like, well, they're the boss and they get to do whatever they want, but that's not the case. And I have found they respect me so much more if I'm able to be um, honest with them and straight with them and help us move past this, right? So it's easily easier said than done, right? Because if you're not the type of person that likes to have those conversations or is comfortable having those conversations, it's a soft skill that really needs practice. And so one of the ways to do that, we as a team did this many years ago, we all read uh, the book together and you can do it in an abbreviated format, but we wanted to kind of bring everybody to the table, kind of air out, here's how we want to, as a culture of our team, um, bring this uh, method to everybody's plate. And that way, therefore, we can have these conversations and know that it's not personal. It's always about moving the business forward. So I would just um, want to honor that always by saying, if you're somebody that really needs to be coached through a difficult conversation at, and or have somebody by your side when you have those first conversations, being a leader, um, I'm always happy to help with that because it is, it's a very kind of precise moment when you can look somebody in the eye, still hug it out at the end and have and go forward and be able to you know coach through it. So um, that's one portion of the communication that I really am passionate about because we don't have time to kind of not speak the truth and or there has to be a way that we can do that in such a way that it's constructive and that we both win and then we can move forward. Any questions on that approach at all? Anybody going through this themselves 
have any sharing they'd like to do? I have. Okay. I think I love this conversation because I didn't know this about myself until recently. I haven't. And so this summer I had some interesting things transpire with uh, a partner that was helping me. She was while I was on vacation and it didn't go well. And so <laughs> I had to have the conversation with her about, and she's a newer agent. And I said, this isn't about you and me, our relationship. This is just an opportunity for us to rehash what happened so that we can learn from it so that we can grow stronger, so that you can go st stronger and I can grow stronger. And I, when I reflected on that, I was like, I'm proud of myself for not just being mad at her. Could have killed the whole deal. Yeah. But I was like, it's not about that. If I didn't yeah. set up the expectation for you and this was an opportunity for me to learn as well as you. Yes, that's perfect. And I think uh, it is a, that people, and I would say, so I'm, Late, late 50s and I would say my culture is very like top-down thinking right and there's that hierarchy that you can't speak to somebody at that is technically or a, a boss or something like that that way but I also there's always a way to speak kindly and still draw out like how can I help facilitate this conversation and I think one of the things I learned it was so funny especially men and no offense but men have a hard time with this because they um it's, it's and a man woman having a conversation like that employer employee is really challenging in this time in, uh, of our lives. Uh, I remember having a vice president and I um, worked for him as his executive assistant and I knew that I had kind of dropped the ball on a couple of things and I was having my performance review and he could not uh, he was just like oh this is great this is great this is great and I said hey I said I know that we need to talk about these couple of things that happened and he goes yeah. And I literally had to give myself a performance review for him because he couldn't do the, the talking. So, um, but yeah, I think once you come in with the mindset and then also, again, you know, up front or you're able to upfront say, this is how we want to have this conversation. It's out of respect. It's out of um, trying to move through this and what's my DNA and why this happened in the first place. You know, did I not provide you with enough training? Did I not give you the right information? I want to make sure I know so I don't make that mistake again, too. So, yeah, I am proud of you, too, for bringing that up. Um, as much as I, and it, it comes across, it could come across as aggressive by saying, I want to have this conversation, but as important, obviously, is listening. And I'm terrible about quiet time. Like if someone, they always say, like, when you're, in an agent, you ask open-ended questions and sit back and let them answer them. And I'm just like, the silence is killing me. And so it's really difficult for me to allow that time for active listening, but so, so important because when, especially you're kind of creating an open conversation and it's going to be difficult, letting them get some stuff off their chest immediately right away to kind of get that ball started is so important. And so recognizing and acknowledging what they're saying and not preparing for your response, as they always say, is the best um, way to do that. Uh, example of that for me is my husband was in the National Guard and had been on a couple of different deployments. And when they returned from deployment, we had to go through a marriage strengthening class together because we'd been apart for a year or more at times. And so we had a strong marriage. So I wasn't worried about that. But one of the the tools that they used was a communication strategy. And so they gave us literally a uh, magnet that had the tips on it, but the magnet was also a tool that whoever held the magnet had the right to speak at that moment. And so once they were done saying what they wanted to say, then they handed the magnet over to the listener. And then the listener had to say, okay, what I heard you say was, and repeat and then they got to then respond. So it was like a very methodical way to begin to practice how to have that give and take. But it was nice to know that when I held that magnet, I got to do all the talking and there was none of this talking over me to get to that next step, right? So, um, but also just listening. And that's, just, it's been a very um, challenging for me to get better at that because I, I do want to resolve, but I also have to let people know I've been thinking about this for how long, and now I'm kind of just springing this on you, and I need you to have time to digest that and be able to respond as well. Um, 
Then there's the, the point when you go, okay, I want to have this conversation. We need to have this conversation, but I know this person's disc or whatever personality type, and I don't want them to feel blindsided, right? I've worked with people where they really need to ponder, digest, you know, simmer on the topic and then be able to come back and really have a good conversation. And that's amazingly perfect because you want to have everybody believe that they have time to, to prepare and get the emotion out of it. And so again, that's part of your strategy, right? So when you're having these expectations conversations and you ask them, how do you want to discuss performance issues or performance conversations? And someone will say, hey, I really like to send me some information, tell me we're gonna have this conversation, let me digest that and prepare a little bit better. And then I'd love to have a conversation with you. And so that they can kind of, you know, they may have some anger and they may have some feelings and we can kind of come at, back at it um, a little bit more clear-headed. Um, I think another piece of communication, guys, is that one of the things I was with my sister last week and we were talking about something and she was angry at a coworker and she goes, always, every time. And she uses those words, always, every time, never, you know, so, you know it's never there's never a blanket every time, right? So we have to try to avoid words like that when we're talking about an isolated situation and make sure that we choose our words and organize our thoughts really well so that we don't come across as aggressive or we're, or blaming or maybe assuming things. So maybe you really wanna come from, again, what, what did I, what could I have done that contributed to uh, maybe the issue that we're discussing what do I own in that? And how can I seek your, your perspective so that we can move that forward? And I do have people I have learned over time that need that cushion before we can have a conversation, but they're not afraid to have the conversation. They just need the cushion to be able to speak to it. Um, and then resolutions too. It's like, you really want to be able to walk away and say, okay, I've already, it's already behind us. I'm always going to look through the windshield and not the rearview mirror. I, we are learning from this, we're moving forward. And then you wanna be able to you know, execute against that plan. Um, in our world, there's a lot less formality when it comes to like having documented conversations versus being able to resolve situations on your own. Uh, but if you're in a situation where you're you are get, given a lot of performance feedback and you're in the, the early stages of your um, time with the team or time with your agent as an operations person, it's always best to like keep that documented on both sides. Because again, we want, we always want that 90 days, that first 90 days to be that evaluation period. And in the, you know, beyond that, then the course corrections seem to be a little easier because now you've already had set the standard for what that looks like. You've already been able to have good feedback conversations throughout that 90 day time frame, which is a super important part of that is that ongoing feedback during that time when people are onboarding or people are new and as an agent and you're working through stuff with them and they do something really goofy with their scripting or they make a mistake with something, you really have to catch them and, and correct those things instantly so things don't drag on into the future relationship. Um, and so also be, being kind of self-aware of who you are and how you handle things. And so be authentic as much as you can and know that this is just like any other um, process that you need to practice and prepare. Never try to do something like this off the cuff. Um, communication is a big deal. And I'm very, very much a uh, face-to-face or Zoom to Zoom, toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe person when we're having these kinds of conversations, doing them via text or over the phone are really, really difficult. And they, they can cause a lot of issues because perception is such a, you know, varying thing. Um, but we always want to be able to say, did, you know, at the end of that conversation, what are the next steps? Are, were we able to resolve this? Do we need to have an additional conversation? Um, who else needs to be involved in that conversation? Do we have any further clarity on what happened and how we can prevent it from happening again? And then, um, like, we're moving forward and we're all good. Yep. Um, and I will just say it's as important to have a fierce, good conversation as it is to have a fierce, like performance, bad conversation. Um, sometimes it's awkward for people to even give praise or say good things because they don't feel it's like genuine or authentic. But just having like 
a moment or a flash of, I wanted just to tell you, you did a great job. I saw that email you sent out and it was just spot on. You nailed it. Thank you for taking the lead on that. You really saved me a ton of time. Um, it sometimes doesn't come natural for people to be on that side of the conversation either. So gratitude, love, appreciation, all of the good things that can come from being honest and open and authentic uh, really also may take a muscle memory to get you to that point too. I don't know if anybody's ever had any issue with that, but I know you know some people may or not may or may forget to do so. Um, I know one of the agents I'm working with right now, I have to remind him like, hey, you should probably shoot a text over to so-and-so because they just really stepped it up lately. He goes, oh, thank you for reminding me. I never think of those things, right? So um, I think, you know, if we can come from a place of like, we want to balance all communication. So it's not always when I approach you, that's going to be bad or negative or anything like that. We want to approach everything from, I'm a communicator and I'm going to communicate with you um, and be honest with you and make sure that our relationship is built on uh, being able to give each other open and honest feedback. So I hope those were some good tips uh, on communication. Any thoughts before we move on to next year planning stuff? I just think those were really great tips because I can remember to my past career where my boss was very intimidating. You know, she had, she just had a way about her that was like, she felt, she appeared as though she felt like she had to keep up with all of the boys club. And so she just gave this presence, like it just didn't feel authentic. And so you always were like, what is she going to do? What's she going to say? What is, yeah. what's her angle? You always felt like there was an angle. And so I feel like just being authentic and caring and like, there were times when she came across caring and I was like, wow, she is human. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like just being kind and authentic and really appreciating when they do so, like when they shine, you know, look at what you did. That was amazing. Yeah. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and sometimes it's almost like, well, and obviously we're dealing with humans with all kinds of back history of what they've experienced having, trying to have conversations. So we always have to take that into consideration that we're, they're not as prepared or advanced in their communication skills as we are. And that's where we can just always come from contribution, wanting to do the right thing, find the right way to uh, facilitate that conversation. But yeah, I think it's a, it's a super, it's a gift. Um, and it's one of my gifts that has grown with me over time and my strengths finder communication is one of my top gifts. And so I really try to use that and help coach people through conversations um, that way. And it's, um, it's really interesting because even when I've been interviewing people and I, I can say, hey, I, I kind of already sense that you might not be a great fit for this role, but I actually do know other people in my world that I could connect you with that it might, you might be better suited for a smaller team or a, have you thought about this kind of role? And all of a sudden they open up and go, yeah, I've always really thought about that one, but I saw this opening and I just thought I would try for it. Right. But if you can kind of work through it and encourage them, it doesn't, it isn't such a hard, we're not going to move forward with you kind of conversation. And it's honest and it's truthful. Like I, I do have a pretty wide range of companies in the operations field that I can like direct people, refer people to. So that's been, it's been helpful. And people, like I said, going through the interviewing process, aren't used to as thorough as we do and aren't used to being asked a lot of what they like and what they prefer and what their feelings are and how they like to be communicated with. So it's always good that way. Okay. I'm going to move on to um, the ultimate planning uh, event for next year. So I don't know what your all's like makeup is as far as if you're individual agents, if you're operations, if you have a large team, if you're in a larger brokerage, larger EXP group, whatever that may be. But one of my favorite, favorite times of the year is approaching. And that is October when we usually kick off our 20, our next year's planning sessions. And so I'm somebody who is kind of obsessed with like school supplies. So I actually even take my own grandson's school shopping so I can buy myself new pens and new markers and new paper and a new calendar and all the things so that I can, you know, feel like I'm starting a brand new month too. And that's what 2024 planning feels like for me when I start to think about that. So um, a couple of things that I like to do, and if you're a single agent that doesn't have a group or a, a cohort to work through, maybe we pull a group together, we can do it as a, as a group. But um, I just love like coming in and, and being free to think about what the next year could look like and setting some goals for ourselves and um, 
like big thinking and having someone else to bounce ideas off of. And so a couple of things, um, what we've always done is a retreat. Uh, we, we try to take everybody away from the office, away, you know, and, and how you can do that in your particular situation is completely up to you. But um, we love to like make it an event. We have dinner. It's, it's a culture building event. We get to know each other better. We do some brainstorming. We do some um, a little activities, icebreakers. We have swag. Uh, we make it a big deal because we're really talking about like what went well last year, what didn't go well, what's, what, are the, what do we want to learn from for next year? Like what is everybody's conglomerate of goals and then how can we help you get there? Um, so we do try to go off site, have a nice dinner, spend, spend a little bit of money and have a really good event. And then um, when we're there though, we want to follow a pretty prescribed agenda. We, can't, we have to keep bringing people back in, right? So we're always going to have these big goals for the year. And I always include personal goals, financial goals. Um, and if I'm a leader, I want to have growth goals for my team, um, new ideas, things like that. Uh, we want to make sure that we, we can kind of hone in on some of the big things right away. But I think it gets really overwhelming when people try to plan an entire year. And so if we can kind of think about, okay, this is our history. This is what we've accomplished. This is where I feel like I can like learn more and get stronger in these areas. Um, I'm going to put them, you know, write them down and we can kind of think them through. But what, but if you're an agent and you say, this year I'm going to do 100 open houses and you look at last year and you did not do one, what makes you think you're going to do 100 next year? What's going to change so significantly in your way of doing work that you're going to be able to do that, right? So if you're not an open house person, if you're not a circle prospecting person, if you're not a systems person, you really got to sit down and think about what's a realistic goal. And if it is part of your job, you need to have one. You need to be able to execute against it. But don't promise to implement seven systems when, you know, we really don't need that, right? So let's just be really purposeful about that. So we want to talk about setting goals and, and we want to make sure that they are reasonable. And then we can kind of get, throw the spaghetti at the wall, kind of get a list of all the great ideas everybody's got give people the environment that they can offer suggestions to how the agents liked what operations did for them, what operations liked about what the agents did, what were some of the frustrations back and forth, where are some ways that we can work better together. Um, I think a lot of it is we want to, as an operations person, I just want them to win. I want to support them as much as I can. I want them to own the, their part of the, the process. I will own my part of the process. The communication has to be good there. And then I really want to encourage ideas. And so I never want those, those brainstorming sessions to be, oh, well, that's not going to work. Oh, that can't work. Or we're not going to be able to do that. We always want to just be coming from, that's a great idea. Let's put this one down and we'll see where that takes us, right? And so we want to like get all of the like, great ideas. And you're going to have some seasoned people on the team, some new people on the team that have no history. And they're going to take you know that environment and... Um, kind of create like their own mindset about what this is like every year, right? Oh, this is a great thing. We get to go on this offsite. We get to plan goals. I have someone that can guide me. We have coaching through it. I'll really get to understand more about the team, that kind of thing. So um, it's really important to be and have good energy, make sure that you're providing an environment where people get to be open, have great ideas um, and realistic goals. And then that first kind of before that meeting, you can even have some homework where they can kind of think through some of their personal goals. I know teams do um, vision boards and like things like that. Kind of depends on who you have on your team and your in your circle that you want to do things with. But you want that time to be very purposeful, right? So we don't want to just have a like a fun day off. We want to really be purposeful about that because that's just the beginning. Like the day that we do that offsite is the beginning. And then from there, we all have to come kind of back to, okay, next month, we're going to kind of drill down to what are the top three things that we really want to accomplish and can accomplish with our existing staff? Do we have to add staff? Um, what else is out there that we need to accomplish? What are the considerations we have to make for the business market as, as it sits today? Do we have to adjust our thinking a little bit based upon any of the current um, 
opportunities that are now available to us. So we want to, you know, have that safe space. We want to be able to brainstorm and do good things. And then the leadership team or somebody that's in a role that can consolidate that information puts it all together. And then we can kind of get it in a format that um, everybody can look at. And then we can start brainstorming, like, what is the most important thing that we would like to try to do next year? What are some of the things we should wait on? What needs somebody else's skill set? What things do we want to push out quarter two, quarter three, quarter four? Um, I always call agents, and I can't, I guess I'm one of them too. I, I'm the idea fairy, man. I can come up with some fantastic ideas. And I want things to happen really fast and I want it to happen now. And I think that's where getting everything out there and kind of filtering through the things that can be done, implemented quickly with a lot of, not a lot of pain, but are super important and can gain efficiency and help the business run better. As much as like, I wish we would do quarterly team events like this, because this is really fun and we don't do enough of these. And it's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Maybe we should put that on our calendars, right? Um, we also want to take time while we're together to separate and let people have some downtime to kind of process through some thoughts. So maybe they come with an initial list of goals and ideas and things like that. We get some of those out on the table. They get to hear what other people's ideas are now. Then take a break and let everybody kind of simmer on that a little bit. Maybe write some further notes down, put some strategies together against that. Think through maybe some of the things they might not have thought of before, and then kind of come back together and see what new ideas might have been um, formulating. So um, have you guys done retreats like this in the past? Or what has your planning process looked like before? Any thoughts? Zero? <laughs> no planning process? <laughs> no, we definitely have. And we do every year with our team, my husband and I, we've done it with the expansion. In fact, we do have um, some people that commented here, <clears throat> maybe we make our session, Sharon, if you're open to it in November, you and I could kind of take team it. We have you on the calendar already for one of our Wednesday calls. And we could take the hour to maybe do that with those that don't have anybody to do it with. So um, if you are on the call and you want to do that, um, I'm sorry, October, not November. Are we in September? Yeah, October. Yeah. Um, we have you on the calendar. We could, um, we'll, we'll, we will post it in here, but you could absolutely attend. And then if you're interested, maybe um, work chat Sharon, and she probably does have some questions or some ideas of pre uh, work that you could come with um, already kind of done. And we'll have an hour of time or, you know, 50 minutes to kind of do that with you. If you don't uh, have anybody else to do it with, I think it's just more fun to do it with a group, even if we're doing it via Zoom. And I can invite all the people in our group, Sharon, because there will be people that may choose to do that if they aren't doing something maybe locally. Um, if you have people around you locally, you could all get together together in person and then jump on zoom together that way you've got some in-person energy and uh yet you could you know tap into sharon and i and we could kind of guide you through some of the things uh if you're open to that sharon i am i love it yeah i'd love to facilitate something like that and i do have several tools from multiple different brokerages i've worked with in the past that we could put together a nice little kit uh for people to use yeah i would love that for sure um i think uh, another part of that is um making sure that we have given everybody the opportunity to, to, to think things through. But another big caution I have is don't wait until January to implement something that needs to be done today. So we still have October, November, December ahead of us, right? And so what could we do to maybe do a challenge starting October 1st or November 1st or October 1st through the end of November that will be stimulating some of the activity that we need to get Q1 off to a great start. I am the notorious, I'm gonna start my diet on January 1st. I'm gonna start working out on January 1st. What if we made October 1st, the January 1st? And so if we take the time, let's say now to maybe think of a couple of things that we really need to buckle down on, really gain some ground on our, our prospecting, our open houses, our circle, our postcards, our social media posts, whatever it may be, um, perhaps a 30 day challenge starting October 1st as kicking off that activity would be a great idea too. So um, great ideas don't have to wait. Uh, if, if there's a way that you can take, hey, I finally had the time to really think through some of the opportunities we have in front of us now, um, what would keep me from doing something today versus waiting until January or Q1 to do that? Um, another thing I will also recommend is having an outsider come in and facilitate. So I love that Carrie said, you know, we could we could help facilitate that for y'all because 
yeah, as you know, oftentimes an outside voice brings more, um, helps you facilitate it a little bit better and they come with different perspectives, right? So I want, you know, I would definitely encourage you if you even have one topic, you would want someone to come and speak about whether it's um, not real estate related, maybe even life related or somebody like in the financial world it's always good to like bring another outside perspective in that, that can help your team kind of think and consider ways to help enhance their own personal growth in addition to what they need to do for your business as well. Um, outside of that, I would just say, take the time to um, make sure that you have a plan and also know that sometimes planning out more than a quarter at a time is, is challenging. And if you've ever read the 12 week year or you haven't, um, yeah, the 12 week year, it's breaking everything down in 90 day chunks. And that makes things a lot less overwhelming because now you can really focus and you can still have the goals for the, for the months following that, like you're doing some larger planning, but if you can kind of keep things in 90 day chunks, it does help kind of win. You can see some wins early on versus waiting until the whole year and say, well, we did it. We got all those closings we were expecting instead of celebrating them in the 30 day and 60 day and the 90 day mark. So yeah. Um, so that's really what I wanted to cover today. Again, I don't like to take a whole hour because we're trying to optimize everybody's time, but would love any questions or thoughts people have um, from here. Don't be shy, guys. Do you guys have any questions or ahas or just anything, even like operations or systems? Yeah planning related it doesn't have to be something that Sharon covered but she typically has an answer so is there something that you're working on while you have Sharon here that she could maybe provide some solution or ideas on for you maybe a yeah. missing link in your business I'm currently also working on implementation of a couple of for a team CRM so I'm really accustomed to helping break down data and being able to ensure that the data is cleaned up and that we apply, you know, um, auto plans or drip campaigns or making sure that we're connecting with those people, having some scripts with that too. So if there's a systems question you have, um, currently what you're, whatever you're using, maybe I can assist with that as well. I have a question. I feel like when you first introduced your background, you said a little bit of how your strengths have translated into real estate. And so a lot of times we'll meet people on these calls that like, maybe I'm not ready to work with you yet, but six months from now or a year from now. So if you could maybe remind us of a few things, something maybe you've already said or something that you haven't, that are ways that you've been able to transform for people, like things that the tangible things like, wow, okay, she does this or... Yeah, I, I've been called the Mary Poppins of operations because I kind of come in in times when a team and mostly larger teams, just because they have a full staff, um, they come in and they'll say, I'm without a director of operations, I need to hire and onboard that person and not let my business fail. Are you able to come in and serve in that capacity? So I've done like actual been the director of operations on an interim basis. I've come in when someone is gonna make their first admin hire and they want another set of eyes or somebody with that experience that can help them navigate that. I can help interview for them. I can even help train them depending on you know, what their availability is. And so it, it really varies, but my background is really anything from um, helping to hire onboard a staff member, hire, bring on and onboard agents. I've done quite a few agent onboardings um, operational efficiency is something I'm really passionate about. So it's like looking at your current system for managing a transaction or how you follow up with referrals or anything like that and kind of figure out ways to automate and systematize those things and simplify things. Or I think I also have a pretty good grasp of um, how to, to speak efficiently and write efficient, shorter emails. So there's another book I love called Brief and um, simply said, where it's all about like, how do we how do we accomplish the goal of getting the message out there without making it 10 paragraphs long, right? So sometimes it's just an agent that needs a little bit of a like clarity around, they're still going to be an independent agent, but they were starting to, the wheels are starting to squeak a little bit louder. Do I need to bring on that first hire? That kind of thing. So I would say anything to do with 
staffing operations, onboarding systems kind of thinking, um, I can make myself, you know, do a quick assessment and figure out where people are. But um, I think, especially if you've got like, if you're a larger team and you have a director of operations and you're not sure how to help them, how to develop a growth plan for them and what they really want. That's another thing I think I do really well is I can draw out from people like what their their perfect job would look like and how can we get you there um, in a stepping stone manner, things like that. So, yeah. I don't I don't have a ton of capacity, though, because you wouldn't believe how heavy some of these implementations may be. But I just love chatting with people. And I've had really good conversations with agents around the US, just with some quick questions that want some advice. And I'm happy to do that for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. Of course. Great to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you. All right. Well, if nothing else, I'm excited about the opportunity to speak with you guys every month. I'm looking forward to October and we'll make that our like workshop for planning if people want to do that. Um, Carrie, any final thoughts? Always hard for me to come off uh, mute. Sorry. <clears throat> no, I think it'd be great. So spread the word. If you have anybody local to you that would like to get involved um, mid-October, we typically pick, let me just look, actually, I'll tell you what date it is because we already have Sharon on the calendar for October. It is, I think we do, don't we, Sharon? Is it? Um, why don't I see you? Maybe we didn't have you on in October. Well, it's usually the third, yeah, it's the third yeah. Wednesday of the month, so the 18th. Make it transfer to mine. So, oh, I recall. Um, so we already had a gentleman on the 18th, so I believe we have you, off, that's okay, still on the 25th. Oh, perfect, yeah. And then yeah. we can always, like, do a separate, like, get together yeah. to discuss the planning outside of this regular call, of course. So I now that I know there might be some interest, I definitely will put something together. Yeah, let's uh, let's plan on the 25th just because a lot of people are used to the schedule. And then I'm going to get the word out to people. If you want to share the word out, you find people around you that want to get together in person and we can do it. And then we will um, we will go ahead and post about it. And then you can comment below the post or you can reach out to us if you're interested on work chat. We'll get you a few things for um, prior to. And then uh, let's make October a month that you feel like you can get some of your planning done so, since maybe you don't find yourself doing that all the time because you know, you're just kind of a solo agent and you don't think of it. I mean, when I was a solo agent, I didn't do a lot of that because I was just doing stuff by myself. And so yeah. it yeah. just didn't my mind. And yet it's very, very important. So we can do it together. Perfect. Yeah. And I think that's where, um, even as a solo agent, you're still a person in this world that needs a plan, right. And take yes. the time to like set your personal, professional, spiritual, financial, other goals and work your, your career around that. Right. So um, it doesn't matter. You know, it just, it's really good. I'm a planner and I have to have a, you know, a direction. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I think also maybe, maybe we put together a 30 day challenge would be fun too. Yeah. Um, that's actually a great idea. So if you're interested in the systems and the planning and the execution uh, again, reach out to Sharon or I, and then we'll kind of compile us all in a group uh, chat or something like that so that we can make sure that we um, help each other. And I'll go ahead and comment and post below this live stream too. So if people are watching it live, you guys can uh, do the same. Or if you watch it later, we uh, you can reach out to us as well. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. It was so fun Thank to see you. everybody again. Talk to you soon, guys. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.